Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Tharna Noor, joining you from Baltimore. With President Donald Trump threatening to pull out of the Paris Climate Agreement and choosing climate denier Scott Pruitt to head the Environmental Protection Agency, environmentalists are pressing action on a state and local level. This week, the Maryland State House of Representatives overrode Republican Governor Larry Hoven's veto of the Clean Energy Jobs Act. The Maryland Senate is expected to follow suit and uh, take up the override in the coming days, actually tomorrow, uh, which would put the law into effect. The 2016 bill would ensure that Maryland will get 25% of its electricity from renewables by 2020. With us from Tacoma Park, Maryland, to discuss this is Mike Tidwell. Mike is the founder and the director of the, climate, of the Chesapeake Climate Action Network, a grassroots nonprofit dedicated to raising awareness about the impacts and solutions associated with global warming in Maryland, Virginia, and DC. Tidwell is also an author and a filmmaker whose books include The Ravaging Tide, Strange Weather, Future Katrinas, and The Race to Save America's Coastal Cities. Thanks for joining us today, Mike. So could you just begin by telling us a bit about what this bill would accomplish if it's passed? Um, it's called the Clean Energy Jobs Act. So what does this bill mean for energy and for jobs in Maryland? Well, this is an expansion of the state's current mandate for clean electricity uh, in the statewide electricity grid. Basically, it, it incentivizes the expansion of wind and solar power uh, in the grid, creating thousands of jobs in both of those sectors while dramatically reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the state. It is a um, response to climate change. It's actually uh, been state policy going back uh, to 2004 when uh, then governor, Republican Governor Robert Ehrlich uh, signed the original uh, clean electricity standard. And uh, since 2004, it's literally created uh, thousands of jobs in the wind and solar industry uh, while reducing pollution. So this bill that uh, unfortunately Governor Hogan, Larry Hogan vetoed in May uh, was overridden by the uh, Maryland House of Delegates yesterday uh, by a vote of I believe 88 to 51 and we expect the Maryland Senate to override uh, the veto tomorrow at which point it will become law. And it's worth noting that the Senate override came on the same day as the release of a report uh, from the U.S. Department of Energy, which showed that from 2015 to 2016, the solar industry employed double uh, the number of people that oil, coal, and gas industry did combined. Um, so when Governor Larry Hogan vetoed the bill in May, he said in his veto letter that he did so because, and this is a quote, uh, this legislation is a tax increase that will be levied upon every single uh, electricity ratepayer in Maryland. Is there any truth to this? Um, if this bill is passed, will ordinarily, uh, ordinary Maryland taxpayers actually pay the price? Well, according to Governor Hogan's own study, his Maryland Department of the Environment in the fall of 2015 said that clean electricity standards in Maryland, along with other actions to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by statute, had actually expanded the state's economy dramatically and created 30,000 jobs in the last 10 years. So Larry Hogan is on record as saying these precise policies to incentivize wind and solar dramatically expand the you know, net expansion of the economy and net increase in terms of jobs. For the, so for the governor to call this a tax is basically like the governor saying it is a bad thing for the economy to expand uh, and for jobs to increase. Um, there, the, the truth is that the cost to Maryland ratepayers is about 58 cents per average household. Um, that's 58 cents that they would see per month a slight increase in their electricity bill uh, because wind and solar, well, solar is slightly more expensive than, for example, uh, mountaintop removal coal and combustion, which leads to global warming. But if you add the avoided health impacts, you know, fewer people die of lung cancer, fewer children have asthma, fewer parents miss their days at work because they have to stay home with their kids who have asthma. If you factor in the health benefits and the jobs benefit and the economic benefits, uh, this is a huge boon, uh, as I said, to uh, average Maryland households. So the governor has it wrong. His own data shows that he has it wrong. Uh, I think this is just a uh, uh, you know, a political grandstanding by the governor. He thought he could score some points by confusing the Maryland public and calling it a tax. It's the opposite of a tax, and his own data says so. 
Uh, and looking nationally, Maryland's not the only state supporting legislation that pr promotes uh, the use of renewables. Republican Governor Bruce Rauner supported the Future Energy Jobs Bill in Illinois. Uh, in Michigan, Republican Governor Rick Snyder supported a bill that encourages the use of renewables and removes the cap on the spending for uh, the energy efficiency program there. Uh, and your organization pointed out that Maryland's clean energy bill garnered bipartisan support. So talk about why you think such legislation is gaining popularity amongst even Republicans. People see it. People see solar on rooftops. They have someone in their extended family who now works for the solar industry or the wind industry. There are more people working uh, in the solar industry in Maryland today than people work in the crab industry. Um, so people are just seeing it and they're seeing the benefits and they like it. And more and more people are concerned about climate change. They're living the impacts, whether it be sea level rise, you know, flooding and in interior areas, drought in different parts of the country. People are seeing the impacts of climate change at the same time that they are uh, personally and directly uh, experiencing the benefits of clean energy. So I think that's uh, what is happening and no governor and no president are gonna stop the fact that wind and solar prices are falling, that there are many, many more jobs in these industries than uh, mountaintop removal for coal or fracking for gas or deep water drilling for oil. But uh, this legislation is not getting passed without criticism. Uh, in Illinois, for instance, environmentalists like the Union of Concerned Scientists have pointed out that the Future Energy Jobs Bill reduced consumer savings from investing in efficient energy like solar power. Uh, and they also pointed out that it contains subsidies for uh, coal and gas plants. So is the Clean Energy Jobs Bill here different? And if so, how? Um, I don't know the details of the Illinois bill. I know that they there, there is nothing related to coal in Maryland's bill. Uh, in Maryland, this is basically uh, the principal winners in Maryland are uh, the Maryland solar industry and the wind industry, not just in Maryland, but throughout uh, the mid-Atlantic region. Um, there are some loopholes in the Maryland law. There are some paper mills that are able to declare that one byproduct of paper milling is something called black liquor, which companies have been combusting to create electricity since the 1930s. Uh, because of a loophole in this law, they get credit for renewable energy, which is wrong and unfair. And uh, nu numerous environmental groups have tried to uh, end that loophole uh, for several years. Uh, but it's a small percentage of the renewable energy portfolio in the state, a very small percentage. The overwhelming share of the growth in renewable energy in Maryland is wind and solar. Uh, the legislators know that, the legislators see it, um, and that's why this uh, veto override um, has been successful. Uh, President Donald Trump and his appointees have been fairly hostile to any pro-environmental legislation. Last week, a leak from his transition team released by Axios showed that he plans to essentially completely gut the EPA. Uh, and he signed an executive order permitting the construction of the Keystone XL and Dakota Access pipelines, both extremely controversial, of course. Um, here's a clip of him speaking to chief executives about that executive order. State's big league. We're reducing taxes very substantially, and we're reducing unnecessary regulations. So we want could anti-environmental policy on a federal level actually impact uh, what's possible for the creation of green jobs on a state level? There's no question that what Donald Trump is doing in Washington is detrimental to the American people. Um, it could lead to dirtier air, uh, more oil spills, and other harms. There's just no way around that. Um, and at the same time, what the president is doing is inspiring many states uh, that are embracing the need for clean energy and are leaders on clean energy to go even further, even faster. California, for example, uh, they are stepping up their game even further in the wake of Donald Trump. Many of the New England states, and now you have Maryland, the House of uh, delegates voted yesterday to override the Republican veto of this clean electricity bill. Um, you're going to see, uh, frankly, next year, even bigger clean electricity mandates uh, coming before the Maryland General Assembly, in part because, uh, in part as a reaction to Donald Trump. So I think you're going to see a lot of the progressive states uh, going even further and faster along the uh, path of clean energy than you would have seen without Donald Trump. And the hope is that these states, 
California, for example, is the sixth largest economy in the world, that these states together uh, can move the country in the right direction despite Donald Trump. Mike Tidwell, thanks so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.